Hey all, welcome back. It's the Diplomat here for round two of going through the Chris Watts Discovery. So let's uh, let's just get into it. So uh, here's where I left off last on page six. So we're at the point where Christopher gave us consent to check Shanann's phone. It had an alert which stated the garage door was opened at 1242 hours. Detective Baumhover took the phone to the Frederick Police Department. Christopher showed me on his phone, which shows alarm times when the doors are opened. It sent an alarm at about the time stating he had left the garage door open. Christopher told me that at least three times, which I felt was unusual. Shanann's phone showed an alert at 1242 hours for the garage door, which is the only way someone could leave the residence. Christopher's demeanor was nonchalant. He asked one time if he could go look for his family. I advised him her car was at the residence and I needed him there for now. He did not ask again about looking and he did not seem overly concerned. Nicole and Nate said they both felt Christopher was extremely nervous. Nathan uh, Nate said he had heard Christopher numerous times in the past yelling loudly at Shanann. I canvassed the neighborhood. No one I contacted observed any vehicles coming or going or anything unusual. I left business cards on a few residences that had video surveillance and qu requested copies if anything was observed. I had Weld County Dispatch and a check while being Bolo um, for Shanann and the children. Be on the lookout is what Bolo is. The contact was recorded on taser camera. Nothing further at this time. So I do find this to be interesting. And um, I brought this up with the armchair detective yesterday. Found it interesting. I'm not sure if there's anything to come of it. but um, And there's more later in the discovery. But this whole thing about the garage door being opened, and it's a little confusing with the times um, because it said it had an alert which stated the garage door was open at 1242 hours. But then later it says um, uh, it sent an alarm at about the time stating he had left the garage door open, which Chris says he left it open or he got an alert that it was open when he left that morning. But he said he looked back and he saw it closed. So... And then you have this whole 1242, which I thought was Nicole Atkinson trying to get in the garage. I'm not sure. It's very strange. And he seemed to make it a thing about um, uh, saying that, you know, uh, about the alert of it being opened. And he even uh, the, the officer says right here, which Christopher told me that at least three times, which I felt was unusual. So I'm hoping we look into that a little further um, I'm very interested but as you can also see they were on to him I mean they he had he was he was done from the start they they all knew I mean he even notes here right he didn't seem overly concerned um, they both said he was extremely nervous he was very nonchalant um, they knew they knew I mean maybe not a hundred percent but ninety nine point five percent because people just don't vanish when they're abducted. And if someone's going to leave, they're going to take their purse and their things with them. So, I mean, they just were on to him right from the start. He had no chance. And it's all uh, thankful to Cole, Nate, um, uh, Nicholas. They were awesome. So next it goes into a supplemental report regarding different property that was uh, t taken. The order of all this is not exactly um, clear, but uh, we have some property here. Pillowcase with residue. Pillowcases. I'm not sure what that residue was. Uh, top sheet, top bed sheet with residue. I think that was the makeup. Now here we get into some electronics and, and take some note on what electronics were uh, taken. So we have an Apple Watch. Not sure whose that was. Um, and well, that must have been Chris's. It was green. And this Apple Watch is gold and pink, which must have been Shanann's. So two Apple Watches, a MacBook Pro with electrical cord, iPad with pink Cabney Lee brand hard case. So we have a MacBook, an iPad, two Apple Watches, an Echo from the kitchen area, which I've also heard was a. Um, uh, well, yeah, so it was an, it was an Echo. Um, then you have the router, or armchair detective says, the router. 
I have the router. That was funny. <laughs> I love that guy. Um, but we have the router here, Netgear router. Okay, so there's got to be a lot on there, and it's unfortunate we don't get to see it, but, you know, that's the way things are. Um, but I'd really be uh, fascinated with what was on there in terms of emails and all sorts of stuff that you would have found. And, and I believe they were all connected um, uh, in a way with, with the Vivint um, security system they had. So uh, Leggings, clothes possibly last seen in. Book Hold Me Tight, hardback. I'll have to look that book up later. Light blue uh, nitro glove. All bedding pillows from Be uh, Bella's room. All bedding and pillow from Celeste's room. And if you remember, their beds were not made, which was very interesting. So they wanted to take all those, uh, all that stuff. And then Corner Master Bedroom Comforter. All Master Bedroom bedding and pillows. The Master Bedroom men's clothing from the corner. Clothes on the Master Bed. All mo clothes and hamper in Master Bed. Bathroom. Um, so let's stop there. So a lot of linens were strewn about the house. I mean, think about it. You go in there as a cop. All of a sudden, all the linens are everywhere. Um, it just, it's just strange. You know, that's very, very strange. And obviously, he didn't have time. Uh, he planned this extremely poorly. I don't really understand why he would pick a day he's going to work. Um, you know, even if it allows him to go to the, the oil tanks, it's, <laughs> you're supposed to be at work. Um, so uh, he, he just didn't see this coming, which I'm thankful for. He didn't see, he didn't see cops in his house that day. I'll tell you that was not part of his plan. So um, a lot of linens that they, that they took hold of and, and noticed. Baby monitor, two cameras. And if you look at um, Armchair Detective's latest videos, you'll see that he's uh, he's interested in finding out whether the baby monitor actually had video that was uploaded to a server. And then a Dell laptop, with Chris, uh, that's uh, Chris's work computer. So a lot of electronics that the cops have, and you know we've seen certain information, but I'd say very little compared to what was on it. I'm sure. So next, um, we go into the uh, the following officer that arrived at the residence after uh, Coonrod uh, called him. So this is his statement. On August 13, 2018, at approximately 16, 19 hours, I arrived on scene to the 2800 block of Saratoga Trail at the request of Officer Coonrod. Upon arrival, he briefed me of information that Shanann Watts and her two daughters, Bella and Celeste, CC were missing from the residence. Officer Coonrod pointed out the residence to me, which is a yellow two-story with brown trim. When I arrived on scene, the left, east, garage door was open and I observed a white Lexus inside. I later observed a male, later identified as Chris Watts, exit the residence. There was also a brown extended cab Ford pickup parked in the street in front of the house. I spoke to Detective Balmover over the phone and he advised Sergeant Bakes was on his way over to check the house further for the three missing parties or for any note that may have been left behind. I spoke to Chris and he advised he was fine with us going through his house. Chris said he was going to walk around the neighborhood to clear his head. Chris advised he works for Anna Darko as an operator. He advised he works Monday through Friday. The thing I find interesting is, um, you know, Chris was going to walk around the neighborhood to clear his head. Um, but it was it was anguish, and they saw it. It was anguish, and that's why he needs to go and clear his head. Um, and the other interesting thing, of course, is that he continued to just allow them to do whatever uh, they wanted, and that um, that's because he needed to show that he was, um, n you know, he was trying to show his innocence through allowing them to do whatever he they wanted, but he was obviously giving off his guilt um, because of the anguish he was going through. Guilt is a strong, strong, strong emotion. Um, maybe it wasn't guilt that he was feeling specifically, um, but, uh, you know, that type of emotion um, 
that led to his anguish, you know, that he's going to get caught, the fear, maybe it was a fear, um, but uh, those emotions are so powerful, you know, even mentally you can't overcome them, uh, and he certainly couldn't. Uh, I completed a consent to search, f uh, f I completed a consent to search form for the house. Christopher advised he's the homeowner. I advised Chris I want to search his house in its entirety for missing persons. I then had Chris read the bottom of the consent to search form and advised him to ask me any questions he may have before signing. Chris read the bottom and waived his right to a warrant. He then signed and dated the form. A few moments later, Sergeant Banks, Officer Coonrod, and I searched the house. Chris advised we had free reign and to do whatever you got to do. Chris, that's what I, exactly what I was just talking about before, right? Free reign. It was over the top. You know, yes, search everything, you know. It was just over the top strange. Uh, Chris was advised he can go inside with us or stay outside. Chris advised he would stay outside on the deck. Chris advised that th uh, they had been together for eight years and married for six this year. He advised it was very unusual behavior. Chris entered the house and put their dog in the backyard. Upon approaching the front door, I observed a ring doorbell camera. Chris advised me he usually uses the garage door and it depends what Shanann usually uses. He advised the only alerts he had for the doorbell were when his friends, when her friends were here. Chris advised the ring should record as you approach the front door. Chris said it showed that she got home at 1.48 a.m. and the only thing that was weird was the garage door showed that it was still open after he left. There we go again with that. You know why he's, if you'll notice Chris, the things Chris is actually pointing out are things that are um, of interest. And I'm not sure why he's doing that. He thinks he's doing it in a way to uh, be cooperative. And he really, he's giving um, some key information. But this one I don't ever find followed up on um, enough. Chris advises his alarm is through Vivint. It's actually Vivint, I believe. Chris said her friend Nikki said the garage door was shut when she got there. So if it was still open after he left, who shut it? That's my question. I observed a purse on the kitchen counter along with a second phone in a black case. There was a green wallet in the purse. I observed Shanann's Colorado driver's license to be in the wallet along with cash and multiple bank credit debit cards. There was also a nausea and medication in the purse prescribed to Shanann. So obviously even if you're going to um, hit the road, take your kids and up and leave, you are not leaving without your purse, without your ability to buy things, your ability to stay healthy with medicine. It obviously was it's just so obvious. Upon searching the rest of the house, I did not find signs of damaged property or anything that would indicate some type of struggle. The house was very well kept and organized, with exception to the office area. I observed medication and Ziploc bags on the desk in the office. The medication was inhalers and what I recognized to be packages of medicine for nebulizers. There was also a prescription bottle of Celeste for um, um, Prezol, DR, 10 milligrams in the bag. So point there no struggle nothing looked out of place they obviously didn't get abducted you would see all sorts of stuff the lexus was parked in the garage with two car seats in the back seat and the keys sitting on the center console there was also a remote to the garage attached to the passenger side visor i did not observe anything out of ordinary inside the lexus there was a male sitting on the passenger seat there was also other car seats sitting on the floor of the garage the basement was unfinished and very well organized. There was a bed in the basement that had pillows and a blanket on it. The bed was not made. There was also a makeshift window covering on the window near the bed. So there's been a lot of interest in the basement where he was staying um, and sleeping down there. There's video of him being down there if you're interested in looking. It's somewhere out there on YouTube. I then went upstairs into the master bedroom on the second level where Sergeant Banks and Officer Coonrod were. Upon entering this room, Sergeant Banks was looking at a blanket on the floor. I did not observe anything damaged or anything that would indicate a struggle in the bedroom. The washing machine door was open, and it appeared there were a couple child clothing items in the washer. There was a load of clothes in the dryer. So, not sure if that was anything he was wor working on already. I doubt it. In terms of the, the linens, it seemed to be all a lot of it upstairs. Um... The purple kid's bedroom did not have the bed made, but the sheets and blanket were on it. There was a Jack and Jill bathroom pink between two kid bedrooms. There was not water in the toilet of the bathroom. I was advised the bathroom had previously been locked. 
There was a second bathroom off the loft upstairs that children that had children bath items in the tub. There was also a well-organized playroom upstairs with toys and books. The backyard had a short privacy fence with townhomes directly to the south. Upon looking in the backyard, I went back outside to the front where Chris was. I observed there to be a latch at the top of the front door, something commonly used on hotel rooms, that would prevent the door from opening unless the latch was unlatched. I also observed a pair of black, what appeared to be female, flip-flops directly next to the door, front door. Chris advised the garage door pad on the exterior of the garage did not work. Chris advised you had to have the actual garage door open and to close the garage from the outside. Shannon's garage door opening was in the car. So that's just a key thing to note if we look into the garage stuff at all further. Uh, Shannon's garage door opener was in her car, and I assume Chris had that other one. Uh, that he used when he got back um, uh, initially to allow the cops and uh, Nicole and Nicholas in. Officer Coonrod pressed the garage door opener that it is attached to the wall next to the door that leads into the house to see how long it would take for the garage door to close. There was enough time for someone to press the button from inside the garage, then run out of the garage onto the driveway. So that was just a little quick test that they did to see if somebody could hit that and exit. Um, and get away. Chris advised all their families in North Carolina. He advised she had fre has friends in Frederick, Erie, Aurora, uh, Parker, and he has tried to contact them. Chris advised he couldn't log in to check the bank accounts because she does the finances. He said he knows the password but not username. He advised they bank through USAA and Chase. Chris agreed to call to see if there was any activity. So another interesting thing here, like the phone, Shanann's phone, is Chris couldn't get into the the banking uh, through online so he can't get into her phone he can't get into the banking it's just, it's just interesting i wonder if the, how much the cops picked up on that i'm sure they did that he kind of was like like what's going on why are you not uh, able to all of a sudden get into anything you know did people realize you were uh, a, da a danger and you were starting to get cut out of things Chris advised a small black suitcase next to the staircase was from the trip Shanann just got back from on the morning of uh, August 13th. She had went to Arizona for work. Chris advised the suitcase observed in their bedroom was from when they were in North Carolina. He said they just got back from North Carolina, then she went to Arizona two days later. Chris advised if there was a stockpile of cash in the house, he would not have known about, about it. He said she normally only carries approximately $100 cash with her. Um kind of interesting if there's a stockpile of cash in the house i wouldn't know about it <laughs> it's just uh interesting i'm sorry i'm laughing but you know chris is just uh i think he just this was one of the worst planned crimes in history i just i truly believe that um he said she normally only carries sorry approximately a hundred dollars cash with her so he knows a, he wouldn't know about a stockpile but knows exactly how much cash she carries with her the bed of chris's work truck was filled with items including a fire extinguisher a large diameter hose a shovel a gas can and multiple toolboxes chris advised that was a pickup he always drives i find that gas can interesting what was his plans with the gas can maybe he was going to blow those oil um things up who knows but he cer certainly did not. Maybe he didn't have enough time with uh, the co-workers that were coming to the oil field. Chris said he needed to go inside for his card information for the bank. Inside the house, he said there were was a taxi cab charge that posted a chase on the 12th. Chris advised Shanann had a passport, but he didn't know where it was. I asked Chris if he had looked through her wallet to make sure all her cards were there. He said she has different cards than him and didn't know how many she had. He said the debit cards were the same account. Again, doesn't know where her passport is. I don't know if he was starting to get cut out, and maybe she was planning on leaving, uh, you know, as a backup plan and starting to cut him out of certain things. It's it's certainly possible. She she was smart. She had smart friends, and uh, that gave really good advice to her. Chris advised his kids didn't have a favorite pair of shoes they wear. Chris showed a closet with multiple children's shoes in it. He said he tells them to pick up their shoes. Chris advised CC take singular, uh, singular, I guess, for allergies and omeprazole 
for acid reflux. He said he thinks they ran out of inhalers because the last one he saw had zero on it and they hadn't refilled it yet. Chris advised he went back to work on the 8th, so they got home from North Carolina on the 7th. Chris advised she left for Arizona on Friday and got home last night. He advised he had the kids all weekend and they went to a birthday party yesterday. Chris said he had slept in the basement a few times because of the separation. He said it was probably Thursday night into Friday. He advised the kids sleep in their own beds. Sergeant ba uh, Bakes asked about the sheets in the master bedroom. Chris advised she usually jumps into bed after being in the airport and will wash the sheets the next day to get the airport off them. <sighs> okay. All right, Chris. You have an answer for everything, don't you? So you don't know her passport. You don't know her uh, the, the pile of stash she's hiding. You don't know how to get into the banking, but you know that she's going to wash those sheets the next day to get the airport off them. It's very interesting what he does and doesn't know. Chris advised he was in the master bedroom last night. Chris advised Janan works at home in direct sales. Chris advised she doesn't go for walks around the area, but he will go, f maybe she will go for runs. Uh, Chris advised this morning they had a conversation about selling the house and separating. He advised they were both pretty emotional and crying. Chris said Shanann told him she was taking the kids to a friend's house but didn't tell him who. Of course she didn't tell him who. That's why he doesn't know, because she didn't go to a friend's house. He said she was in bed. She was still in bed when that happened. Chris said it was between 4 to 5 a.m. He said he woke up at 4 a.m. Chris said he was passed out when she got home, then woke her up. Chris said he was passed out when she got home, then woke her up. Something not right about that sentence. He said he wanted to have the conversation with her face to face. He said the conversation lasted 30 to 45 minutes. He said he left between 5.15, 5.30 hours. So I'm going to stop there for a second. That is on page 13. Um, I'm not sure if there's issues with how some of this was written or, you know, I think it's a combination of maybe a little of that. And just uh, Chris trying to create the story as it goes along. And um, it doesn't always make sense, obviously. Right? Because he's been sleeping. Just go back for a second. Um, okay, here. Chris, has, Chris said he has slept in the basement a few times because of the separation. Right? So they were already talking about separating and... I mean, to the point where he's sleeping in a different room as a result, right? That's, you're already separated in a way. But then, it was so important for him to have a conversation with her that morning that they're going to be separating. So, um, I will resume on page 13 next. Uh, hope you're enjoying. And um, thank you so much for watching and listening. And we'll continue next time. Have a great day.